Hi everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining me. And um, in the last three four days, I got like one thousand five hundred subscribers, and this is my very first video. And I'm thankful to everyone for all the love, even before the start. The idea of, of this channel is to learn machine learning and data science together. So for all those of you who don't know me, I'm Abhishek. I'm a data scientist and a Kakao fan. And recently, uh, I think four or five months ago, five months probably, I became grandmaster in three of the levels they used to have. And this is what my profile used to look at that time. And now they've announced a new level of data sets where you share the data sets, you get points for that. And this is how my profile looks now, I hope. It will get better soon. So, a lot of people ask me, there are so many channels on YouTube about machine learning, data science. It's a buzzword, you know. <laughs> AI is everywhere. So why is this channel on YouTube? So over the years, I've shared a lot of useful tips and tricks on Kaggle and a lot of other websites like LinkedIn and some on Twitter. And now I want to share the same with a much bigger audience. So another motivation for me to start this channel is to help beginners and amateur data scientists. And if you're a professional, you might know everything that I will talk about in my videos, but I will make sure that there is something interesting for everyone who is watching. The real motivation for me to start this initiative is to learn myself. And if I have to teach something to someone, I need to understand it fully beforehand. I think this is the best way for me to learn, revise and keep me up to date with everything that's going on in this machine learning world. What I've seen that beginners tend to give up quite easily. So some get scared of these humongous data sets that they come across, have no clue where to start from, like you have 20 different CSV files floating around and you have to munch features, you have to create features, you have to create data sets, simple data sets from all these different data sets. And people have no clue where to start from. And some people, they just don't even have the time. They don't have the time to go through different books, like 300 pages books, you know. And there is a very interesting thing that all of these people have in common. It's just theoretical knowledge. They are all well versed and know how things work in theory. But when it comes to applied, people fail, people struggle a lot. They don't know where to start with. So given that, I want to keep my videos and tutorials specific to applied machine learning and data science. And I will also share a lot of tips and tricks how to get stuff done fast how to make the best use of python you know so when i started back in the very beginning of um, 2014 as a data scientist it was very difficult for me to find my first job first of all machine learning was something like i never studied at the university so i had to read about it and learn everything on my own i missed 10 months learning machine learning and then i got my first job and when it came to applications, I was so worse at that time. So the first thing that I did was to learn by solving problems. So I found this website called Kaggle and I took a problem from there. I was working in image processing. And the problem was to identify emotions in images. And I applied very simple things that I learned in image processing. And I failed. I failed miserably. But I didn't give up. I studied what others did and what I did not think about. But I had nothing to show on my resume. So I started building a portfolio of data science and machine learning projects and presenting them in, in a good way, you know, because everyone has done the same kind of projects. You talk about the Titanic problem on Kaggle, thousands of people. So what's different? What's, what is the different thing that you have done? This is something, this is something that that people are looking for when you're giving interviews and you're applying for jobs. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make best use of uh, GitHub 
and Kaggle and how to organize your projects you have a machine learning project organize as well so that you can reuse most of the code that you have written when when someone gives you a csv file okay this is a classification build a model you don't have to spend more than 30 minutes on that and within 30 minutes you can build a very good model you can present graphs and everything you can build basically the whole presentation so and this is what I'm going to show you in this video and this is also helpful when you're working in industry, you know, working with uh, uh, like uh, putting models to production, you know, and it's very useful there. So let's start. So uh, the first thing, uh, where do you code? So let's say you have you have a server, probably AWS or GCP, whatever you're using, and uh, then you have to code something, and it becomes very tedious to run the code there. So what I do is I use Code Server even locally sometimes. So you go find Code Server, and this is the link, and. Then you scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, you have download a binary. And there is this file, I'm going to use this for Linux. And I copy the link location, go back to my terminal, and I will say, okay, fetch the file. So, I hope that doesn't take a lot of time. Okay, so what Code Server does is, Code Server gives you an IDE, or a lot of people also call VS Code as a, a very intelligent text editor. So but this is basically, I, I think it's basically an IDE, and uh, you got the file here now, and that runs right inside your browser. How cool is that? So. Let me expand this uh, code server and there we have it. So we'll just go to this folder. Let's sing you see that like, there's a file called code server, it's a binary file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it and not slash code server. And it's started. So I have code server running on port 8080. Local host. So and it gives you a password. Or what like if you if you want your own password, you can have your own password. So what I do is usually this. I can't even write my name properly. Um code server host zero 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 port. 10,000. Okay. Damn it. Okay. Oh, uh, it's already in use. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do 20,000. So, um, now I have code server running on all IPs and I can access it from anywhere I want. If I have access to the machine, I'm, I'm on the same network. I can access it on the same VPN. Um, so let's go back to Firefox and see what's happening. So I have one two seven zero 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 one twenty thousand and just a password. Okay, the password I put in was a chick. Oh no, I think I'm gonna kind of write my name right. Okay, there we go. Oh, fully fledged VS Code. Not fully fledged, you have everything you need. You don't need anything more than that, I think. So, we go here, I say okay, open the folder that we created, and that was in uh, workspace. Um, machine learning project template. Say okay, oh no. Didn't work. Okay, so here we go. 
on a project template. Okay, so here we go. So we have everything. We don't have any files, we don't have anything. And you have this welcome thing. Okay, start a new file. And uh, change. Okay, so I will call it train.py. I got train.py. I'm just gonna remove this one. No need it. Okay, what else do we need? We need an init. What else? What else do we need? We need some kind of metrics.py. So we have already started building our own like very first uh, machine learning project. Some kind of template that you can use anywhere you want, like all kinds of machine learning project. And I need something like uh, create folds for five. I just need to generate the folds somewhere. Then you have predict.py. And you also need some kind of like, um, um, probably you're working with neural networks and you need some kind of generator. I like to keep them separate. So you need dataset.py. And um, then you need something, I don't know, probably lost.py, some kind of uh, utils that don't go anywhere. And you need probably a feature generator, feature generator.py. And you also need some kind of dispatcher. I will explain why I use this and you need uh, maybe uh, everyone calls it engine so I'm just gonna call it engine that contains your training and evaluation functions you need that uh, what else do you need uh, I cannot think of anything at the moment so you have these files okay let's go and back to the terminal and uh, start new terminal okay what do we have here um cd workspace machine learning project template you see it tells me like which branch i'm on and everything i can show you uh probably in another video how to do that i will like it's like a really cool stuff it can you can use a lot of different things here that will give you a lot of information so i have all these files here but i don't want them like that so i'm just going to create another directory called source and i'm going to move all the files oops we star.py to source so i don't have anything left here and now I need now I need more 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 stuff here. So I'm going to create a file called input. I'm going to create a sorry, I'm going to create a folder called input. I'm going to create a folder called models where I'm going to save the models. I'm going to create a file called git ignore. So if you just touch the file. It creates an empty file. So this is what I have now. You can see everything that I have. Um, so now let's go back to our IDE in Firefox. And um, now you see everything is arranged properly now. Input source models is empty. Input is empty. A lot of files in source. And then to get no. So that's the first thing I do, figure out the GitHub model. So GitHub provides you with some sample Git ignores. Git ignore Python. You have sample Git ignore here. So I'm just, I'm just going to grab everything so you can see it's from GitHub. And uh, if you go here, it has a CC license. You can do whatever. 
whatever you want to do with it <laughs> basically so I'm gonna copy this thing and I'm gonna paste it here so what do we have here so you have like a few building a distribution or like uh, some kind of package for it you need to add these files you know you don't need to like distribute these files so you don't want them in kit and then you have hyper notebook checkpoints you don't want them you have some virtual environment stuff uh so let's add let's add some stuff here so i don't want anything from input data so the files are going to be huge so input data and models and so input models so i will also say like i don't want any data files right star dot csv star dot uh, i don't know h5 star dot go i also don't want any kind of uh uh, I, I'll just add this PTH. Okay. Um, I think that should be good enough for our Git ignore. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, I'll let me just commit this first. So I'm gonna send everything to GitHub. So I can see the status. Tells me, okay, you have a lot of files in this folder and uh, Git ignore. So, I'm just going to add everything, get add dot, um, comment minus m, first comment. I'm just going to call it first comment. Oh, it tells me, ah, uh, okay, uh, you're screwed. Uh, you want to have this? Since I've never used it on my machine, I'm going to say, okay, this is my email address, now you all know. And git config user.name so my username for github okay so we're all set and then go back to comment ah it shows you all the files the new ones um and then let's do git push now going back to firefox can see actually if you open it up and machine learning project template have everything in here everything is there that's a good first step but all of these files are empty so we have to fill them up and let's do that So now we need some data to start with the next steps. Okay, let's go to Kaggle and see. Uh, okay, just sign in. So I'm signing to Kaggle now. And uh, now I need to find the competition where I can download the data from. So let's, let's see, let's see. Let's try an easy one. Uh, okay, categorical feature encoding. All data is categorical, blah blah blah. Okay, let me get the files. Let's save the file. Okay, one and this one is done. Now nah, I have this one. So, what do I have? These three files. I'll take it from here. Mm. Okay, let me move that file to its place and in input. Okay, back to the terminal. So, what do we have here now? So, we go to input. See that we have three files that we just downloaded. Oh, let's unzip train, unzip test, and 
sample submission. Oh, doesn't matter. Okay. I don't need the zip files anymore. I'm just gonna remove them. So I have only three files left. Uh, what does the data look like? Yeah, okay, so I have an ID column, I have a target column, I have a bunch of categorical column. Okay, but uh, if you if you want to see it, you can also see it in uh, our box here. So click on train. Have everything in here. And I don't need anything more than that. So let's start with it. To start with coding it and uh, we'll go back to our Firefox. And this is let's just refresh it. Okay, so an input, you have the training file now, train.csv, if you want to load it, you can load it here, look at the csv file, but we don't need all that. So the first thing we need to do, you probably want to look at what is the distribution of the target. I've already done that, so I'll just go ahead and start coding. So I've imported pandas and Cyclone in the model selection module. Okay, and then what we need is, we don't need a lot of things here, so what I'm going to do is move some space out. So if I run the script, this will be executed. I have the data frame read CSV. So I'm 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 working relative to the base folder. So I would just say input slash train dot CSV. And I will make a fake column called K fold. Assign it a value of minus one. And then I'm just going to shuffle the data. So this will just going to this is just going to shuffle your data. I'm going to reset all the indices and drop the index. That is now. Now what I want next is uh, the key folds. Okay, so let's see. Okay, KF equal to Let's cap the tool. And now if you look at the stripe by kfold documentation, what you have here. Stripe by kfold. Uh, you have the split, shuffle, random state. Okay, let's copy all of them. Come back, I'll put it here. I'll say um, like some 42, that's two of the thing, space five. Okay, I have that. Now what I want is like, uh, for fold, training index, validation index, And then you have 
df comma can add where you want to stratify it so we can go there I can just look here okay split 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 so you have X and Y stratified gear fold okay so it's pretty easy you have the X which is data frame and Y is data fold values now you got this okay I'm just like just some jack and we're running this gold train variant and then top validation value so that's we know and you can just assign the key folds there so validation IDX and your column name is key fold. This is equals to fold. And that's it. You're done. Now it's time to save the file. Input slash train folds. Let's say. And then we don't want the index. Oh, not this one. False. Leave an empty line. Now we're good to go. So going back to the terminal now. I have the source, so I'm just going to say oh, first I'm going to activate a cattle environment. And now I'm just going to write Python minus M because I'm running a module. Create folds. Not goes. Fold. Folds. Now let's see what happens. Okay. So it gives me a warning uh, that you can probably ignore for now. And you have 240,000 training and 60,000 validation. And all of them. So now, if you say like, okay, show me train folds. Well, you can see there is a key fold column, and that's what we are going to use when we are training our models. So now, to start training a model, let's write the training code from. Processing and then finding we have that, and then we need to define like we need to read the training data. So, what you can do is just use pandas. And then you need to import partners. You have the training data here. Now you need validation and test sets. So you can see like for Kful that I have in it is in a list and Kful equal to fold for validation. So you need a fold mapping and you also need fold. So let's say we create a fold mapping, which goes like this. So you have an index, key, and the value is everything else for fold. And then you need to define the variable none. Okay, let's say for now. Also need training data. Let's say it's none too. For now. And since uh, we already know what the target column are and uh, ID and capable column, we don't need them, so we just drop them. So we have most of the data now. Uh, I just do some kind of something like this. So the order of 
variables is the same. You don't need that. It's going to be the same for this specific problem. And now you need is to encode the variables. So this is what I do. So you, I create a list, level encoders, and you have training column. So we'll go through each column and uh, initiate the level encoder class. And then from cyclone, and then you fit on all the training and validation samples, and then you transform them individually. And I'll find like all level encoders to this one. So I will change it a bit. I will append column name. The level encoder. Okay, so I have this now. Now your data is ready to train. But before that, you need to take care of some new, some other things. So training data cannot be done, obviously. So where do we get that from? Let's get that from environment variable. We'll stop in the get. And you get training data. And let's copy the same thing. You get fold. Which fold do you want to train on? Okay, so you have everything now. Now you need to train the model. So we'll start with something basic. Let's try an ensemble model, not not like very basic. And what do we have here? Let's we'll say okay, classifier is ensemble. And I don't care about the parameters, probably just jobs minus one I just want to see uh, then you fit on the training data frame and the predictions are let's get the probability so we just care about the probability for one of the classes. Uh, so predict probable and you have valid DF. Probability for that one, okay. Uh, let's say. Print them. Um, okay, what do we have now? Okay. Trying to go back to the terminal. Um, here I have I have some but this is not going to work. Eh, none, none, everything is done. So I'm gonna create another file run.sh not not inside, but I'm going to put it here. Move and here I'm going to define some variables like training data is input slash training fold and fold is zero let's say we need to export these variables now since we are here we can just write python minus m src dot train We'll use these environment variables and train. Okay, let's see if that works. Only list like your two servers, my person none type. Okay, so we need to fix this. It should be an end that always reads a string. And probably I should fix it. So 
so this is what I did in the background. I create a file run.sh exported the variables and I decided this thing run.sh and in my training function I change this to int float should uh, fold should be an int and now everything works and uh, I think I'm getting some results but I don't want to verify my results so I'll do from sklearn metrics and uh, let's calculate AOC I think the data is cute so print ROC C score so when your data is skewed uh, it's screwed but then you use ROC AOC metric so you have valid ah why valid why valid and you have the predictions now we can run it let's see oh i just have to run it like this everything is there that should be okay yeah so it's training fine so it's fast enough i'm getting a uc of 0 0.739 and now what happens like if I increase the number of estimators so let's say estimators is 200 I think initially it's 100 let's save the file and then try to run it again so it's probably gonna take a while now ah typo let me fix that I've already fixed it in the background and now we try to run it again. Oh, okay. So we improved ASD from 0 0.73 to 7, 0 0.746 almost, I would say. Okay, so uh, we have created kind of a framework. We can use any different kinds of models we want. Now, uh, the different kinds of models, so it depends on what you want, you want to do. So uh, what I do usually is like uh, I have this file called Dispatcher. In Dispatcher, I create the model. So. The dispatcher would say like models with a dictionary and you have a random first and it will return this one. Some other random first. Okay. You can also have something like Trees. Now I'm going to change the run dot as it should have it. So I'm going to say I have another variable called model, which is So that's an argument now. So how that works is like when you run run.sh, you have this variable you have to say which model you want to run, and it will run that for you. So we need to change, but we need to change some things here. So CLF is, I would say, 
from uh, the special. the parameters here so I don't have to mess with the training code anymore so let's say ssh run the ssh run forest okay name ensemble is not different okay obviously because I didn't import it here okay so going back to the terminal now to run this run first so I see the dispatcher has no attribute model okay it doesn't um, and there's a reason for that let me make it smaller uh, you can see it's not model it's models <laughs> I made a mistake there so I'm gonna go back and fix it. Oh uh, no. Models should be model, not the string. Let's run it again. Ah, now it works. So now it's training random forest. We should get the same result as before. Yeah, okay. So it's similar. Uh, because of some randomness. So let's see. Let's for trees. Runs too. Uh, a little bit better result. Okay, so now we are done with the training. Almost. Not fully. We need to save stuff. So, what I do is I just use joblib. Joblib. And I'm going to. Save the things that are created, like I have to say label encoders. So I'm going to say it in models slash. Uh, I would say okay. So f string. I like using f string. It's a new Python thing. And then you can say which model is it. So model underscore. Uh, label and coder graphical. So you save this one and then you have also save the model itself. Model underscore Ah, sorry, that was correct. Model article. Um this one needs to change to the uh, the classifier. Okay. 
Okay, oh, now we are done. Let's try the model using script and we are saving like all the models in this model folder that we have. So let's say, let's see if that works. Uh, I don't know if I have job loop, so I'm just going to install it. So I'm just gonna go up there and run it again. Of course. Let's hope everything works. Straining the model. Okay, almost there. Yeah. Everything is done. Let's go and see how it looks like. So everything should be inside this folder. And there it is. Randomforest.pickle, which is a model Randomforest label encoder. The label encoder that was used with Randomforest. So you have everything now. Now we have to build the inference part. And that's also very quite easy. And if you do it this way, it's much more fun. And it's arranged properly. So let's see that.